Our journey takes us to the Otrar district in the Turkestan region. The purpose of our trip is to visit the mausoleum of Arstan Bab. Otrar is a pivotal point of the Great Silkway route. Besides being a trade hub, it was also a cradle of civilization and artistry during the Middle Ages. The city stretches for 53 kilometers from north to south and 54 kilometers from west to east. Archaeological excavations have unveiled the technologies used to construct palaces, mosques and baths. They also uncovered an array of clay, silver and copper kitchenware. Furthermore, the discovery of ceramic pipes indicates the presence of an advanced water supply and sewage system within the city. Notably, Otrar is recognized as the birthplace of the eminent philosopher Abu Nasr al-Farabi. Altogether, the city boasts more than 130 monuments. However, our focus is not these archaeological findings. Instead, we will delve into another remarkable monument situated near ancient Otrar, the mausoleum of Arstan Bab. Ticket, please. Thank you. Here, we want a ticket to the Arstan Bab Mausoleum. Arstan Bab is the greatest of all Babs, a highly respected person who was a tutor of Khoja Ahmed Yassawi. This is why the clothes you wear to the mausoleum are important. One cannot enter in open shirts and tight pants, as well as women should cover their hair by wearing a headscarf. Kazakhstan began in the 8th century with respected preachers playing a substantial role in this process. Arstan Bab stood out among the spiritual leaders. He promoted the Muslim faith among the Turkic tribes and became the subject of numerous legends. The name of Arstan Bab frequently appears in Koja Ahmed Yesawi's wisdom texts. When Hoca Ahmed Yassawi, whose resting place is in Turkestan, a city known for its pivotal role in the realms of Islam and poetry, reached the age of 63, he contemplated that extending his life beyond that of the Prophet Muhammad would be unwarranted. He felt a compelling need to leave behind a profound legacy for generations to come, to implore Allah's forgiveness for the transgressions committed in his lifetime. With a heartfelt farewell to the world beyond, he descended into the solitude of the underground cell. Here he delved into the pursuit of knowledge, crafting the Book of Wisdom in the ancient Turkic language, with this 90th piece of wisdom being a tribute to his revered mentor, Aristan Bab. In Farab's western side of town, his lane, devotee of Allah, his sacred reign, Aristan Bab, the holiest name. To his right, Lashin Bab shares the same. To his left, Kargabab in silent acclaim, the chief of saints in Yesawi's frame, Aristan Bab in wisdom's eternal flame. Legend has it that Arstan Bab was a companion of Prophet Muhammad. According to prevailing belief, the Prophet entrusted Arstan Bab with guarding a date, which he later bequeathed to Yasawi. to the representatives of Otrar Archaeology Museum Reserve. This is also mentioned in the book Divine Wisdom. This is a copy of the Divine Wisdom by Hoja Ahmed Yassawi. The mention of Aristan Bab is exclusively contained within this work. This book recounts their initial encounter. My mentor, who possessed knowledge of religions across 33 countries and embraced Islam, delivered a date pit to me by the will of the Prophet. If one would quote it precisely, it would read, At the age of seven, Aristan Bab found me and gave me the date pit and concealed my secrets. 
A few lines about Arstan Bab can be found in the epic literature Alpamas Batr as well. Baibori spent three days at the Hazret Sultan Shrine. In Turkestan, there are 10,000 saints countless of them in Sairam, 30 Babas in Otrar, but the holiest and greatest among them is Arstan Bab. Another well-known legend narrates the circumstances of Arstan Bab's death. According to the legends about Arstan Bab, he died in Yassa, the current region of Turkestan. With his belongings, he ordered to put his body in a white ball, a male camel, and release it free. Eventually, the white camel decided to stay here, so the saint's body was buried here as well. The book Divine Wisdom asserts that the saint was buried in the Otrar vicinity, near a place called Kabuk Yarik. Scientists suggest that Kabuk Yarik is associated with the ancient Altinarik channel, which passes through the mausoleum of Arstan Bab. Scholars have pondered the precise definition of Kabuk and their opinions diverge. When referring to Mahmoud al kashgaris dictionary, a specialist in Turkic philology, Abdul Ali Kaidar, claims that Kabuk denotes a trench on elevated land. It is plausible that Arstan Bab's tomb is situated on such elevated terrain. In 2004, Sirik Shaymir Denola conducted an excavation within the tomb of the mausoleum. As a result, the archaeologist archaeologist had uncovered a burial chamber containing bricks from the 12th century. Additionally, bricks of varying shapes attributed to the 14th century style of colors, forms and design were also found. Shremer Dianola deduced that these bricks were imported from the ancient city of Kuyruk Tobie, situated in close proximity to the mausoleum. Scientist Marat Simbin describes the evolution of the mausoleum's construction as follows. The earliest tomb was built in the 12th century, but eventually collapsed. In the 14th century, a new structure was commissioned by Amir Timur. Unfortunately, this too failed to stand the test of time. It wasn't until 1909 that the mausoleum underwent its most recent reconstruction. Back in the 12th century, the locals erected a small mausoleum which unfortunately crumbled over time. Then, in the 14th century, the constructed mausoleum featured three rooms, including a burial chamber. The architectural bricks of this mausoleum date back to the 12th and 14th centuries. What you see here are ancient relics, columns that trace back to the 14th century. These columns, dating back to the 14th century, underwent meticulous study by architect Viranika Varonina. Oddly, she couldn't find any telltale signs on the pillars typically associated with that era. Her research led her to conclude that these columns might have been delivered here from another region. Fast forward to 1909 when the columns were placed inside the mausoleum, the reconstruction of the mausoleum was carried out by Kalmurza, a craftsman from Turkestan. Evidence of this remains in the form of a marble plaque on the facade of the corridor section of the mausoleum, bearing the inscription 1327 Craftsman Kalmurza ben Musapir Turkistani. In 1909, Kalmurza, a craftsman from Turkestan, performed the third reconstruction of the current mausoleum of Arstan Bab. Born in 1888 in the village of Minorik, located near Turkestan, Kalmurza had already started practicing his craft at the age of five. In 1905, he laid the foundation of the Turkestan station, and in 1906, he worked on the Ares station, later seeking employment opportunities, he traveled to the Bostandik district of Uzbekistan. Upon hearing about the opening of the Gazilkent marble plant, he continued building mosques in Tashkent until the end of his days, and there's even a mosque named after him in Tashkent. In 1971, the groundwater levels rose, leading to the partial damage and subsequent reconstruction of the mausoleum mosque. Archaeologist Sirik Shaymir Dinola weighs in on the matter. A section of the mausoleum mosque sustained partial damage and was reconstructed with burned bricks, including the foundation. The mihrab apse on the western wall originally featured a ribbed design, but now it's more rounded. 
The main facade of the mausoleum is constructed from burnt brick. No changes were made in the restoration work of 1971. The total area of this architectural monument is 420 square meters. Its height is 12 meters, length is 35 meters, and width is 12 meters. The mausoleum consists of separate rooms, a mosque, a two-cell burial chamber, and a minaret. The oldest part of the facility is the burial chamber. In the first chamber, there is Arstan Baba's largest tombstone. The second room of the burial chamber has the tombstones of his students, Lashun Bab, Karga Bab, and Hermet Azir. Arastan Bab was not the only one who continued the spread of Islam. Religious teachings were also pursued by Hujja Ahmed Yasawi and his most prominent student Suleiman Bakirhani, as well as the son of Arastan Bab Mansur Atta. Arastan Bab's followers such as Zengi Baba, Khalil Atta, Bahawaddin Nakishpandi, and Saeed Al-Khwarizmi were buried in Uzbekistan. Haji Bektash's grave is in Turkey, while Iskak Bab's grave in the sacred Sazak land. Numerous architect scholars have researched the unique architecture of the mausoleum. They could not definitively attribute the structure to any particular style, region, or architectural movement. It was concluded that the monument's construction does not conform to the architectural norms of Central Asia. For example, the arches of the mausoleum resemble those of early Gothic German castles from the late 13th century. The facade, on the other hand, is designed in all eclectic style reflecting European and Russian architecture. Both large architectural elements and small decorative details are crafted using textured brickwork techniques. Modern and Renaissance styles are also evident. The first person to study mausoleum and provide a professional description of it was the Russian scholar Valentina Konstantinova. She used a simple and unique definition for the towers, referring to them as low parapets resembling tall towers. The semi-dome towers with cylindrical shafts resemble the monuments of local religious architecture dating back to the 18th and 19th centuries. This is likely an homage to Muslim culture. Another notable feature that aligns the mausoleum with local architectural traditions is the corner towers. They correlate with the compositional design of the 15th-17th century Islamic schools in Central Asia. Research has also concluded that the architectural structure of the mausoleums of Arstan Bab and Koja Ahmed Yisab we are distinct from each other. The domes of Arstan Bab's mausoleum are too simple, small and low. However, there is a legend associated with the two mausoleums. Our ancestor Amir Timur wanted to build an exceptional mausoleum over the tomb of Yasawi. All attempts by builders to erect walls were unsuccessful. Then a saint appeared to Amir Timur in a dream, saying that first he should build a mausoleum over the tomb of his teacher Aristan Bab, and then over the tomb of Khoja Ahmed Yasawi. Amir Timur did just that, and afterwards he finally managed to complete the mausoleum of Khoja Ahmed Yasawi. Since 1982, the mausoleum has been under state protection. In 2015, the restoration of the building was carried out. You can't plant flowers and tend to them here. They are only allowed to be planted in pots to avoid damaging the architecture. This valuable architectural relic requires special care. Therefore, specially trained specialists ensure the safety of the monument. We have security guards who work to protect the mausoleum. They watch over the premises for eight hours a day, ensuring that nothing gets damaged. Sometimes we have various problems because many pilgrims come here. 
Someone might try to hide in the corners to perform ablution. But our guards quickly identify such individuals. The mausoleum's walls absorb water quickly, which leads to their deterioration. In front of the mausoleum, there is a well. Its water is quite salty. Pilgrims consider it holy water, so they use it to wash themselves and drink it. But constant water spillage is harmful to the architectural monument, according to the guards, because there are already too many groundwater sources beneath the mausoleum. <laughs> Furthermore, there is a high level of groundwater in this area, and to address this issue, underground drainage systems have been put in place around the mausoleum. It can be said that these drainage systems have lowered the groundwater level, and the building's condition is normal. Wells were also dug to monitor the groundwater level around the mausoleum. The Arstan Bab mausoleum attracts many visitors. Some are interested in its architecture, history and the life of the saint. Others come in hopes of healing. The infrastructure is well developed, providing all the necessary facilities for visitors. Tour guides offer services in Kazakh, Russian, Turkish, English and Chinese languages. The arrival of tourists at the mausoleum is seasonal. Most visitors come during the summer and spring months. There are fewer tourists in the winter. Guests often come from Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan and Russia. As for tourists from foreign countries, we have visitors from England, France and Italy. Currently, there are also many visitors from Turkey. Among the tourists are those who learned about the mausoleum for the first time through social media advertising. There are also those who, inspired by the legends of Aristan Bab, wanted to see his burial place with their own eyes. Gimjai Zavuchu is a tourist from Turkey. He is a scholar, a university lecturer, and is an expert in classical Turkish literature. He flew from Turkey to see the legendary mausoleum. The Turkic world is well acquainted with our ancestor Koca Ahmed Yesawi. I have written a book about him. As for Arstan Bab, we know him as the teacher of Koca Ahmed Yesawi, and I am visiting the mausoleum for the first time. This historical monument, with its unique architecture harmoniously blending Western and Eastern styles, is the national heritage of Kazakhstan. This mausoleum in the ancient land of Otorar is a real masterpiece of architecture. It's a proof of the rich history of the vast Kazakh steppe, a proof of our past life.